Precision Glass Technical Seminars are an Intertech production. For instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com. Now, XAML is not the only interesting feature of WPF. There, here's a hit list of some of the cool things that are baked right into the API. Let me just kind of skate over some of these interesting topics. One thing that you'll notice right away, which, which is very, very different from Windows Forms, is that layout is king. WPF has many different layout managers. We have grids and stack panels and dock panels and canvases. And we typically find that we, we start to build nested layout systems. So we have a very, very precise control model um, where we can say, you know, I want this part of my window to look like this, but I want this part to dynamically resize, and I want these things to stack on top of each other. This is very simple to do under WPF. Another nice feature is that there is built-in support for styles. Now, this is also kind of similar to ASP.NET. Many of you guys have worked with um, server-side styles. We have a similar flavor here under Windows Presentation Foundation. And certainly, styles are covered in detail in the full WPF course that we teach here. Uh, I'm not going to go into that today, but uh, there is some pretty interesting things you can do with these styles. You can make them interactive. So you could build a style that says things like, if the control using my style has focus, make it animate like this. Or if the mouse is over the control which is using my style, make it do that. So it's much more than just simply saying font size is 12 and font family is this and so forth. We can really get these things to have a real interactive life. Now another great thing is that everything under WPF is rendered with vector graphics and that includes the controls themselves. Now this is great. This will make your life a lot simpler when it comes to things like resolution and it also allows you to apply graphical transformations to anything. If you had, for example, a stack panel of controls and you wanted to say, if the user clicks on this button, take that whole stack panel of controls and render it out at a 45 degree angle, maybe to like show the illusion of depth, that, would, that can be done in three lines of XAML. Not kidding. And the cool thing is, you don't have to write any kind of code to recalculate hit testing or to capture when a control has focus. All that's being handled by the subsystem. Now, this thing is pretty, pretty interesting right here. Adobe PDF style documents, right? Very, very feature-rich text. Well, WPF uses a PDF-like API which is based on the XML paper specification. Now, your average end user is not going to know the difference. It's going to either, you know, whether or not it's an Adobe PDF file or an XPS file, it's going to look pretty much the same. Extremely rich text. The cool thing about how WPF does it, though, is that that extremely rich text can be described right through XAML, right? So if you wanted to incorporate PDF-style functionality into your program, real simple to do that. There's even, for example, a built-in sticky notes API. So if you want to let the user select a body of text and a, you know, make a little sticky note that can be saved out later on, that's simple to do as well. WPF has tons of support for graphics and animations. And I want to just speak on that for a little bit because you know, a lot of people that are coming to WPF classes, they're writing business applications. And that's awesome, right? That's, that's what we do all day long. And so it can be a little bit of a um, confusion point, right? A lot of people think to themselves, well, I don't care about animations because I'm just going to be building a, you know, a window with grids full of data and I'm talking to web services and we're talking to databases. I don't need animations. Well, believe it or not, you actually do. You see, animations in WPF, it doesn't necessarily mean you're trying to have a walking stick figure or a bouncing ball or a Pac-Man video game. I mean, you could do that, but animations in WPF are much, much more subtle. All an animation really means is you're changing the value of a property over time. So you might say, 
over the period of five seconds, change the background of that control from a dark blue to a light blue. You know, just some little visual effect, right? Make it look like it's kind of glowing. Well, that would be an animation, right? If you start to build custom templates or custom styles, which is very, very common in WPF, well, they're all about graphics and animation, right? So don't, don't be fooled. Even if you're, you're squarely focused on traditional business applications, graphics and animations are going to be a big part of your daily life. Now, let's take a look at a couple of examples of a WPF program. And I'm going to actually pull up Expression Blend here and show you a couple of samples to give you a better idea of what you can do with this. Right? So let me go into Blend right now. Now, by the way, um, Blend is actually a member of a family of products called the Expression Family. You might be able to see here, there's a couple of different Blend products. I got, I'm sorry, Expression products. I have Blend, Design, and Web. Now, for what we're doing here in this video, I'm just going to stick to Blend. Now, uh, in the WPF course, there's actually a lot of demos on this product so that you really can kind of learn the lay of the land. Here, like I said, I'm just going to kind of open up a couple of samples. So I'm just going to go under Help, Welcome Screen, and there'll be a sample tab over here. Now remember that Blend can be used to build WPF or Silverlight applications. So some of the pro uh, sample projects are WPF and some of them are Silverlight. But remember, they're, they're kindred spirits, right? They're both based on the same core technology set. So maybe let's see, why don't we uh, see what Path Layout does. I've actually not opened this one before, so this will be new to all of us here. All right, so this looks like it's going to be a Silverlight application. So I'm going to run the program. So you can see my browser popped up here because we're a Silverlight application. Okay, so what do we got here? Text. Okay, so what is basically showing us here is how it's possible to incorporate these graphics, right, with animation. So here might be something which is much more fanciful, right? Classic animation. We have an image following a path. We have, you know, some wave effects happening, but over here, okay, here are some animations on a more business scale. Did you see what just happened there? Uh, let's see if I can get that to re reanimate. I'm not sure what I have to click on here. I'll just go back over here. But now watch that graph again. See, maybe you just did a database read here, and you want to go ahead and show the data in a visual format, which is all great. But you want to add just that little bit of eye candy, right, to kind of capture the user's attention. You know, there would be a great example, so it was actually pretty good luck that I pulled up this application. Great example of, you know, yeah, classic animations here, but animations can also be much more subtle like this, just to add some more professionalism. Now if we go to the Blend Artboard, I can actually view all the markup that is being used to construct all of that. So I'm just going to go here to the XAML viewer. Now here's the case in point. Okay, ask yourself the following question. Here we got a storyboard, which is fairly lengthy. Let's see, where's the end of this storyboard? Yeah, we're still going here. That's quite the storyboard. There it is. Okay, this whole thing is controlling some animations. Visual Studio has no support to visually design an animation. So if you wanted to use only Visual Studio and you wanted the same output that we just saw, you're typing all this. And I don't know about you, but that does not look like my idea of a great day at work, right? Let me just show you another sample here that I have used before. Go back to the welcome screen. So let's do How about PC gaming? 
This is also another Silverlight application. So I'll just hit Control F5 to run the program. So again, we can see these nice little animation effects. Notice as I put my mouse over one of these items, I get a little pop-up. Well, that's also controlled through XAML. There's actually a way to apply these graphical transformations to items. So if I click on something, you can see it just kind of bubbled out. I can go back to the main wheel. Right? Now, you know, could we build these types of applications without WPF or Silverlight? Absolutely. <clears throat> but if we were going to be using a traditional toolkit, we would be writing reams and reams of code. And the part that's really so impressive is that a majority of all that graphical flair is being driven through this markup. Here's another example of an older blend um, demo. It's kind of like a 3D rendered motorcycle. And if you click on any one of these little orange circles in the bottom, it becomes this spinning rotating button. And whatever you click on, this 3D rendered motorcycle will kind of spin and flip to show you the thing you just clicked on. Right? So that was a pretty good demo they had back in the day of just showing how much functionality we can actually get out of this expressive XML based grammar. For more free learning resources and to see the latest lineup of our instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com.